Yvette motions to Shauna as she points down the street to the two ladies standing by their horses and says, well, let's go meet them. So they go down here to meet their two new acquaintances. And as they walk down the street, the front door to Hotel Morgan opens and the owner, Clark Morgan, along with another business type gentleman, exits. Clark Morgan looks down the street and spots the four heroes as they mount their horses and ride out of town towards the north and towards the new mine. business gentleman leans over to Clark Morgan and says, do they have any idea what's in store for them? Clark Morgan turns to the business gentleman and replies, not in this world, as he returns inside his hotel. Jonathan here and welcome back as we continue to follow our heroes to the mine. After our heroes have left town during dusk, night has begun to fall. And as our heroes stop for the night to camp, one by one, they fall asleep. Morning has risen and after getting up and readying themselves a good breakfast, our heroes continue northward towards the mine. With the mid-afternoon sun beating down upon our heroes, they decide to stop and find what little shade they can. While stopped, our heroes put their finishing touches on their special upgrading talents they've been working on. And with that, let's go ahead and upgrade. When you play Shadows of Brimstone, you can play it as a one-shot. Set it up, play it once, tear it down, so you don't have to worry about saving anything later. Or, you can play it as an extended game known as a campaign, which will give your heroes the ability to level up and upgrade into more powerful heroes. Now when you play in a campaign, you keep track of the XP, experience points that you have gained. The ways to gain XP are from Encounter, Darkness, Loot, and Scavenge Cards, Healing Wounds or Sanity Damage on other heroes, or other events, whether in the mine, other worlds, or in town. The information for leveling up and upgrading can be found here in the Shadows of Brimstone Seed of the Ancients Adventure Book on pages 9 through 17 in the section Hero Classes and Leveling Up. There's also two more sections here on page 9, XP and Hero Levels and Hero Posse Level. We're going to go ahead and look at XP and Hero Levels, which has six subsections. The first subsection is Spending XP to Level Up. Now in the white box at the bottom it says, it is important to note that XP is actually spent to level up, removing the XP from your hero's XP total. So after you gain 500 XP, you'll spend all that putting yourself back at zero XP, but then you'll be a hero level two, and then so forth to level three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Our second subsection is mark down your new level. So on a scrap piece of paper or a sticky, just go ahead and put the new level that you're on and put that on your hero character sheet. Our third subsection is hero level cap. So the level as you see is capped at level eight, now, Flying Frog Productions might be upgrading that to level 9 through 15 or 20, but we don't know exactly when that's coming out. Our fourth subsection is leveling up mid-game. 
Now there is not a specific time that you can go ahead and level up. All it says is that at the start of a game turn, so before you do the holding back the darkness, you can go ahead and upgrade your hero at that time. Now also remember that when you do upgrade, you're going to fully heal your health and sanity and then you're going to restore one grit. So it might be to your advantage to hold off till maybe you're hurt a lot, but don't hold off too much because you could get KO'd. Our fifth subsection is Roll for Free Upgrade Bonus. So the next eight pages here, there's two pages for each hero and on the left page there's a chart, an upgrade bonus, where you'll roll 2d6 and you'll go ahead and you'll get a bonus upgrade. Our final subsection is choosing an upgrade chart ability. So on the right page, you'll go ahead and see a chart there and you'll decide which one of those you want to pick so it'll choose your future of how you want to act your character out. So that's going to end the XP and hero levels. Let's go to the hero posse level. Now just like there's a hero level for each hero, the hero posse level is the combination of all of the heroes together forming a group. Now there's an example here where we have a level 2 hero, two level 3s, and a level 4 hero. This is going to make a hero posse level of level 4. All you do for the hero posse level is just take the highest level hero and that is going to be your hero posse level. So with that, it comes down to the subsection of tougher monsters. Now as the heroes get up in strength, the monsters have got to get up in strength also. Otherwise you're going to be battling 20, 30, 40 void spiders and it's going to be pretty easy and you're going to get kind of bored. So as the chart says here, there's a posse level. And then when you reach a certain posse level, you go to the right and it gives an enemy bonus. So on posse level 1 and 2, there's no bonuses for the enemy. On 3 and 4, the enemies are going to get an elite ability. On 5 and 6, they'll go ahead and flip over the enemy record sheet and we'll see the brutal side. And then on 7 and 8, the brutal side will obtain an elite ability. Now remember, once an adventure starts, the hero posse level does not change. So if your highest hero level is a 4, which makes a hero posse level 4, and that level 4 turns into a level 5, for this adventure, you'll still be at a hero posse level 4, not a hero posse level 5. So let's go ahead and we'll look at the enemy record sheet. So here's the Night Terrors. And so as you'll see there, here's the elite chart that you'll be using as you upgrade them. And now when you do battle an enemy that has an elite, you gain plus 5 XP for each elite. Now this is based upon their base number, not the bonus number here. So on the Night Terror, it's 10 plus 5, and if they have one elite, it'll be a 15 plus 5. And then when you get to the Brutal side, you go ahead and flip them over, and now you have the Brutal Night Terrors. And then the XP, which was 10 plus 5 on the green side, the red side here shows a 20 plus 5. And then for each elite, you'll get a plus 5. So if there's one elite, you'll get a 25 plus 5. And for two, you'll get a 30 plus 5. So with all of that information, let's go ahead and move on to our first hero, Yvette Wilson, Gunslinger. Yvette Wilson, our Gunslinger, has 575 XP. When we go over to page 9 to look at the chart for leveling up, our Gunslinger is going to have to spend 500 XP to become a Hero Level 2. That means she is going to have 75 XP remaining. So with that, Yvette Wilson, Gunslinger, is going to be a Hero Level 2 with 75 XP. The information for leveling up and upgrading the Gunslinger can be found here in the Shadows of Brimstone City of the Ancients Adventure Book on pages 16 and 17 in the section Gunslinger. Now on the left hand side is some information about the Gunslinger and the starting upgrade 
where you can see her pistol fanning that she uses. And then over here on the left hand side is that chart for that upgrade bonus. So we're going to go ahead and roll that 2d6 to see what our gunslinger gets for an upgrade bonus. We get a 7. So our upgrade bonus says for a 7 that our gunslinger, Yvette Wilson, is going to get a plus 2 health and a plus 2 sanity. Alright. So let's go ahead and get some stickies and put that onto her hero character sheet. So we got our gunslinger here, Yvette Wilson. And we're going to go ahead and upgrade her health. So our health is added 10 right now. We're going to go ahead and add plus 2. So our health is going to go from 10 up to 12. And then we got our sanity here of 14. So our sanity is going up plus 2. So that's going to go from a 14 up to a 16. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and go over here and look on the upgrade chart to decide what direction we want our gunslinger, Yvette Wilson, to go to. So you can see on the top we have shooting, showmanship, way of the gun, and reputation. So as we look at these, we get to choose which one we want to go through instead of rolling that 2d6. And we've decided that Yvette is going to go the way of the gun. So she's going to get ricochet shots. Start with up to two ricochet shots in your six shooter. So remember in her six shooter she had those brownish gold tokens which were called the dead eye shots and that gave her a plus two damage and now she's going to have some green ones and these are the ricochet shots. So I went ahead and just wrote up some information for the upgrade way of the gun ricochet shots and on here it says start with up to two ricochet shots in your six shooter and then no regard to range line of sight and adjacent enemies the information for ricochet shots can be found here in the shadows of brimstone city of the ancients adventure book on page six in the section the gunslinger subsection other types of shots so in the white box it says the following shot types are only available once they are unlocked by getting an ability that lets you use them. So the green bullet is the ricochet shots and it says that you may use a ricochet shot to choose a target without regards to range, line of sight, or being adjacent to. So with that, Yvette uses her pistol which has a range of 6, so if she wants to shoot at a range of 8 or 10, she can use a ricochet shot to do that. And if for some reason an enemy is around a corner and she does not have line of sight to it, she can use one of those ricochet shot bullets to bounce off the wall and hit the enemy. And the final one is that when you are using a ranged weapon, you need to target enemies that are adjacent to you first before you can go ahead and target anything else. But with the use of a ricochet shot, you don't have to do that. So that's going to go ahead and conclude the leveling up and upgrading of Yvette Wilson, Gunslinger. Let's go ahead and move on to Shauna Wilson, Saloon Girl. Shauna Wilson, our Saloon Girl, has 500 XP, so she just barely made it. When we go over to page 9 to look at the chart for leveling up, our saloon girl is going to have to spend all of her 500 XP to become a hero level 2. That means she is going to have 0 XP remaining. So with that, Shauna Wilson, saloon girl, is going to be a hero level 2 with 0 XP. The information for leveling up and upgrading the saloon girl can be found here in the Shadows of Brimstone City of the Ancients Adventure Book on pages 12 and 13. So on the left side there's some information about the saloon girl with her upgrade of acrobatic dodge. And then here's the chart on the left side for the upgrade bonus. So let's go and roll that 2d6 to see which upgrade bonus she gets.
All right, so she got a five, and it says here, plus one strength or plus one agility. Also gain plus D6 health, sanity, any mix. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and roll a D6, and on an odd, she's gonna go ahead and upgrade her strength. And odd it is. So she gets a plus one to her strength. So let's go ahead and get a sticky and change that. So here's the Saloon Girls hero character sheet. And we'll go ahead and change her strength from a one up to a two. There we go. Then next, she's gonna go ahead and get a D6 worth of health or sanity, any mix. So let's go ahead and see how much she gets. Okay, so she gets a four, and we can go ahead and split that up however we want. And just by looking at Shauna's hero character sheet, she's got a health of 12 and a sanity of 12. So we're gonna go ahead and just split that four up to two and two. So we'll make those nice and even going up. So here's the Saloon Girls hero character sheet. And as you can see, she's got a health of 12, and that's going to go up by 2 to a 14. And then her sanity is at a 12, and that one's going to go up by 2 to a 14 also. All right. So then on the right page here, we have the upgrade chart. And for the saloon girl, we can do... Fighting, Moxie, Acrobatics, or Charm. So I figured since she's got Acrobatic Dodge for her first upgrade, we'll go ahead and keep going down the Acrobatics chart there, and it's going to be Sleight of Hand. Use one grit to ready a once-per-fight item you are carrying. You may also roll an extra die for scavenging. All right. So I went ahead and just made up a paper here that says Upgrade Acrobatics Sleight of Hand. Use one grit to ready a once per fight item you are carrying. You may also roll an extra die for scavenging. So our saloon girl, she's got the holdout pistol that she uses as it says free attack once per fight. So if I spend one grit, I can go ahead and ready this to use the holdout pistol again. So that's going to conclude the leveling up and upgrading of Shauna Wilson, Saloon Girl. Let's go ahead and move on to Sam Harthinger, U.S. Marshal. Sam Harthinger, our U.S. Marshal, has 725 XP. When we go over to page 9 to look at the chart for leveling up, our U.S. Marshal is going to have to spend 500 XP to become a Hero Level 2 that means she is going to have 225 XP remaining. So with that, Sam Harthinger, U.S. Marshal, is going to be a Hero Level 2 with 225 XP. The information for leveling up and upgrading the U.S. Marshal can be found here in the Shadows of Brimstone, City of the Ancients Adventure Book on pages 10 and 11. So over on the left-hand side is the information for the U.S. Marshal and the upgrade, you can see their Rolling Thunder that she took. On the left side is the upgrade bonus chart. So we're going to go ahead and roll a 2d6 to see what upgrade bonus she got. Okay, a 6. So we'll go ahead and look on the upgrade bonus chart here. And a 6 says, plus 1 Cunning or plus 1 Spirit. Also gain plus D6 health, sanity, any mix. All right, so let's go ahead and roll a D6, and on a odd, she'll get the cunning. Oh, and she got a three, so that's odd, so she gets a cunning. So let's go ahead and look at her hero character sheet. And up at the top there, she's got a cunning of four. So then a plus one to that is going to put her at a cunning of five. 
There we go. And then next she's going to get a D6 of Health, Sanity, Any Mix. Okay, we got a five. Okay, so I think what we're going to do is that she's got a health of 10 and a sanity of 10. So we're going to go ahead and increase her health by three up to a 13. And then we're going to go ahead and increase her sanity up by two to a 12. Okay. And then next we're going to go ahead and come over here to the upgrade chart to see what she wants to do. And we got Traveler, Resolve, Honor, Bounty Hunting. Alright, well, since she did transfer from the U.S. Marshal Division to the Bounty Hunting Division, she's going to go ahead and go down the Bounty Hunting column. And we have Focus. You no longer need to target adjacent enemies first with ranged attacks. And then plus one max grit. Alright. So let me go ahead and look at her hero character sheet here. And she's got a max grit of two. So her max grit goes up by one from two to a three. All right, then I made a little piece of paper for her. It says, Upgrade, Bounty Hunting, Focus. You no longer need to target adjacent enemies first with ranged attacks, plus one max grit. So that's going to conclude the leveling up and upgrading of Sam Harthinger, U.S. Marshal. Let's go ahead and move on to our last hero, Angela Abundas, Bandita. Angela Bundes, our bandita, has 550 XP. When we go over to page 9 to look at the chart for leveling up, our bandita is going to have to spend 500 XP to become a hero level 2. That means she is going to have 50 XP remaining. So with that, Angela Bundes, bandita, is going to be a hero level 2 with 50 XP. The information for leveling up and upgrading the bandita can be found in the Shadows of Brimstone City of the Ancients Adventure Book on pages 14 and 15. So on the left side is some information about playing the Bandita and you can see her starting upgrade of Swindler. And here's the chart for the upgrade bonus. So let's go ahead and roll those 2d6 to see what kind of an upgrade bonus she gets. Okay, she gets Snake Eyes. So she rolls a two, so let's go ahead and check out the upgrade bonus and see what she got. Vendetta. Choose a specific enemy type, tentacles, stranglers, etc. From now on, anytime you collect XP from that enemy type, collect an extra 10 XP. Alright, well, so it looks like a while ago she was attacked by that Void Spider. So she's going to go ahead and have a vendetta against void spiders. So anytime that she kills one of them and she gets the XP from that void spider, she'll get that extra 10 XP. Excellent. So let's see how many of those void spiders that Angela can take down. So let's go ahead and look at the upgrade chart to see which one she gets. And she can choose between guns, Explosives, Brawling, and Scoundrel. Well, she doesn't like explosives because of her childhood. So, we're going to go with Brawling. And the first one is Swingin' Fists. Instead of a normal melee attack, use one grit to do a three combat melee attack to every adjacent model. Nice. Okay, well, you're going to have to watch out for that one because every adjacent model means that if she's next to one of the heroes, she's going to end up hitting the heroes also. So I made up a paper for her, 
and it's upgrade brawling swinging fists instead of a normal melee attack use one grit to do a three combat melee attack to every adjacent model so with all of our heroes leveled up to level two our heroes mount their horses and continue towards the north as the sun is beginning to drop below the horizon With our heroes continuing north, dusk begins to settle. Once out of sight, several unseen creatures stir about the land. Now that night has fallen, and with the arrival of the mine tomorrow, and after our heroes stop for the night to camp, one by one, they fall asleep. Morning has risen, and once again after ridding themselves with a good breakfast, our heroes continue northward towards the mine. Late afternoon comes about and Shauna stops our heroes as she opens up the map and points out the landmarks that identifies the direction and location of the mine. After explaining the first two landmarks, a large grove of trees, one of them struck by lightning and a shallow stream, Yvette cuts in and finishes off Shauna's identification of the last two landmarks, a huge cropping of boulders and then a mixture of steep and rolling hills that make it impassable except for the southern route through those huge cropping of boulders. Shauna is surprised and asks how Yvette knows this. Yvette says that on day three in town she met an old prospector in the saloon and he wanted her to go check out a mine with a large dark stone deposit which he would have done if he was 20 years younger. These landmarks are identical to the ones that the old prospector told her about. Now Yvette told the old prospector that she is busy for the next week, but when she returns, she will talk with him about the mine. Yvette looks at Shauna and sees that Shauna is kind of mad at her. As Shauna tells Yvette, you said you went to the blacksmith on that day. Hmm. Then Yvette's eyes widen as she notices something at the bottom of the map. Morganville? Sam speaks up and says that she saw the town's large sign as they rode out of town and it looks like they should be putting it up soon. While well, Shauna returns the papers to her side bag, Yvette shakes her head as she knows nothing good is going to come of this. As the sun begins its descent to the horizon, the heroes continue on and make their way to the entrance of the mine. After turning south and riding from the huge cropping of boulders and following the mixture of steep and rolling hills, the mine begins to come into view. Our heroes finally stop before the mine entrance as the sight and silence beckons them forward. Before our heroes dismount, Sam inquires, what is our mission? And with that, let's go ahead and introduce the mission. The information for the mission, Basic Mission 1, for a few Darkstone more, can be found here in the Shadows of Brimstone City of the Ancients adventure book on page 20. Basic Mission 1, for a few Darkstone more. Sitting in a saloon one afternoon, you overhear talk of a local mine up in the hills that has a large deposit of dark stone just waiting for someone to come and claim it. It sounds too good to be true, and it probably is, but the old prospector swears up and down that 
he would go claim it himself if he were 20 years younger. It's not hard to figure out which mind system he's talking about based on the landmarks he mentions, and though the other patrons he tells just dismiss him, this could be the big score you've been looking for. Setup. This mission starts at the mine entrance. Mission goal. This is a large deposit of dark stone, so you need to find four clues. Special rules. There are no special rules for this mission. Objectives. When you get the fourth clue, you're going to ignore any attacks or encounters that are on the final exploration token, and then you're going to ignore any door or gate icons on the tokens as there are no exits from this room. You're going to go ahead and you're going to reveal all growing dread cards, and then the heroes are going to face an epic threat. Once all enemies have been defeated, the heroes have successfully completed the mission. Reward. Since this is a large deposit, the heroes will get 75 XP and D3 plus 2 Darkstone. Failure. If the heroes fail the mission, the darkness escapes the mines and wreaks havoc on the countryside and the neighboring towns. When the heroes travel to the frontier town, D3 random buildings will be destroyed by the escaping darkness. And also remember that in addition to the mission for a few Darkstone more, Clark Morgan wanted our heroes to obtain some flora and fauna from the other side of that fully glowing blue exit and fill up the two specimen jars that he gave them. Now the specimen jar can only be filled up once the heroes find the fourth clue and then while they're trying to defeat the epic threat they've got to go ahead and try and collect some flora and fauna. So with our heroes upgraded and the mission introduced join us next video as our heroes begin their adventure at the mine entrance.